If you want to get started with embroidery, it can be overwhelming when you start to hear how many different techniques and methods that there are available for you to try. Today, I'm going to share a few quick questions that will help you think about what you want to do and narrow down your options. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, bojagi, and embroidery. If you've decided you want to get started with hand embroidery and you've just started looking for where to start, it can be overwhelming. There's all these different terms like embroidery and stitches and cross stitch and hardanger and what do they all mean and what style should you even start with? These questions will help you think about what technique of embroidery will match your personality and that will help you ensure that you actually enjoy the process of what you're doing. The first question to think about is what do you want your final piece to look like? Do you want a picture that you can hang on the wall? Do you want to finish this into a pillow or a bag? Or do you want to embroider on something like a shirt or clothing or a tea towel, something like that? Thinking about what you want your finished project to be will narrow down some of the options that are available to you. The second thing to think about is, do you want your embroidery to be just a geometric design or do you want it to look like a picture? There are a lot of different options for this. So deciding basically if you want a geometric design or a picture will help eliminate some other options. Another thing to think about is color. Some embroidery techniques use only one or a few different colors and then other techniques can use all the colors of the rainbow. Choosing a design with many different colors can add a lot more interest and excitement to your piece, but it's also going to add expense to the amount of thread that you need to purchase for it. So you might need to balance how much color you want with how much you want to spend on supplies. If you are someone who really likes the look of monochromatic designs, then there are some techniques that work especially well for that. Another thing you want to think about is how much of a rule follower are you? Are you someone who takes a pattern as a suggestion or are you somebody who wants to follow that to the letter? Some embroidery techniques have a lot of leeway and freedom so that you can express yourself and make a totally unique item. Other embroidery techniques require you to stay in the lines and follow the structure of that to make sure that everything is going to work out at the end. In some situations, exploring your own creativity could be disastrous. The last thing to think about is how personally creative you want to be. Do you want to follow a pattern and know that your piece is going to look exactly like the pattern you have? Or do you want to play around with it and experiment and try your own thing as you go? So there are different techniques that allow you to be more creative and other techniques that can guarantee what your finished piece is going to look like. So once you've thought about all these questions, these are some embroidery techniques that you might want to consider. Of course, you're not limited to only one embroidery technique and you might have days where you want to be creative and days where you just want to follow a pattern. Just choose the right option for you in the moment that you're at. The first technique to consider is surface embroidery. This is just regular embroidery that you've probably heard of. If you learn stitches like back stitch and running stitch and chain stitch, that's the stitches that are used. So they can be done on any kind of base and it's often done with cotton thread like embroidery floss or with wool thread for cruel embroidery. And this type of embroidery, it can look like a picture or it can have geometric designs. It can be done on clothing or household linens or you can embroider a piece and frame it to hang on the wall. So there's a lot of variety with this. Some patterns come with detailed instructions so that you can make your piece look pretty close to the picture on the pattern. It might take a bit of practice to get your stitches as nice as you want them to be but with practice you can easily do that. And there's also a lot of room for creativity. So in this sample I take a basic flower motif and I stitch the same thing in nine different ways. So you can see 
that there's also creativity to make your piece look one of a kind. If you want to follow a structure and follow a pattern exactly and have the comfort of knowing that your piece is going to look exactly like the picture and the pattern, even if you're a beginner, then cross stitch is probably a great option. Cross stitch is made with tiny stitches that are an X. They're made by stitching from corner to corner on each intersection of the base fabric. The fabric that you use for this is not regular cotton fabric. It's an even weave fabric such as Ada cloth or linen that has a specific grid to put your stitches on. And then the stitches are all like little pixels in a design. You can get cross stitch patterns for anything you can imagine. If you want a picture that looks like an animal or a bicycle or a piece of fruit, you can get that. And there's a lot of geometric designs as well. There's even software available that will turn your own photograph into a cross stitch pattern. So cross stitch is a great option if you want to know exactly what your piece is going to look like before you even start. It's more difficult to do cross stitch on items like clothing and household linens that don't have the even weave in them. But if you want to make a picture to hang on a wall or to turn into a pillow or use in something else, then cross stitch is a good choice. If you are a rule follower who really likes structure and staying inside the lines, then Hardanger could be a great option for you. The basis of Hardanger is these little blocks with parallel stitches and the blocks line up to make an outline. But then the base threads of the fabric are cut and removed, which actually leaves holes in the fabric. Because of this cut work, it's absolutely essential that your base stitches are stitched properly and they do line up. Otherwise, you can run into problems when you start cutting and removing the background threads. But once you get that, then you get this beautiful open work that you can either leave as holes or you can fill in with this delicate lacy filling stitches. Traditionally, Hardanger is done with white thread on white fabric and that's still a beautiful look. But of course, you can do Hardanger with different fabric and thread combinations. One nice thing about Hardanger is that the pieces can actually be cut out and stand alone as a unit. So you can make pictures to frame to hang on the wall, you could turn it into a pillow, or you can make little ornaments to hang or motifs that can be added onto other fiber projects. So if you love geometric stitching designs and you're ready for a little challenge, then Hardanger might be a great option for you. If you're looking for a relaxing embroidery style that doesn't require a lot of thinking or attention to detail, then Bargello might be a good choice for you. Bargello is worked on an open canvas and is made of straight stitches that move up and down at steps of different sizes. Usually, once one row is done, then the other rows will echo that. And so it can be just a basic zigzag, but there's also a lot of other beautiful variations. This technique is really relaxing and it doesn't require a lot of thought and concentration. So it can be very meditative to just make the stitches following the baseline. Bargello can be done on needlepoint canvas, which gives some options for finishing and it can also be done on plastic canvas, which because of its rigidity, it gives a lot of different options. So it can even be turned into three dimensional objects like boxes and cups. So if you're looking for a really relaxing embroidery technique where you just follow the lines and do simple stitches over and over, Bargello might be a great choice for you. Of course, there are many, many more embroidery techniques such as needlepoint, stump work, black work, chicken scratch, huck weaving. And once you get started in this world, you'll find more things than you ever imagined possible. But before you start a new technique, just think about these questions and think about how this technique is going to fit in with your personality. Once you find the technique that's a perfect match, then that's when you're really going to find it enjoying and a relaxing stress relief. To review these questions 
and get more information about getting started with different types of embroidery, be sure to check on the link below and visit Evita Studio. Mm -hmm.